All right, so let's uh, check out my new Wavetable pack, Side Tables Volume 4. So this will be the official showcase video uh, of it. I'm not going to do a stream. I'm going to try a different format. I'm just going to uh, create a video of me using the pack, uh, and I'll explain along the way uh, on some of the Wavetables probably. So what I've done so far is just I prepared a little beat so you guys can just have a listen. Super simple stuff. So I basically, yeah, so we're gonna try and fill out this spectral content over here. And we're gonna start by crafting a baseline uh, using one of the wavetables. So I'm gonna grab Serum for this because Serum is the best synth for this, in my opinion, because I've just grown accustomed to it. Uh, basically. So let's just start by having a midi clip. Just going to loop this part. I'm going to go for G sharp. I always forget about that. And then we're going to grab a velocity. I learned this trick from uh, Shep at Mute Production, which I find pretty clever. So if we go back into our synth here, we can just do like that. And I'm going to go for the standard low low pass over here grab an envelope so if you go in here you have a lot of different folders uh, that are categorized so <clears throat> you got one like bandpass sweeps bass bubble band fm and so on and so forth so let's go into the bass folder over here and we already got like already processed uh resampled baselines, right? So, and a good tip here is to adjust the phase of the actual waveform. So I like having it around at the end. Uh, so let's just start by having it at 359. And let's just see how this sounds like. So, with the velocity trick over here, what I can do is I don't have to like go in and fine tune the velocity over here. I can just use the outload, the minimum output over here. And I find that pretty clever. So So once I set a setting that I like, um, I can just flick through the different base shapes and see what I like.
these are just like super weird. I think I'm gonna go for this one. Let's just adjust the modulation amount. for a gentle high pass. Nice. So now we have a good baseline going on, I suppose. Let's just see if we can grab an oscilloscope. If we can twist and turn to get it more in phase, let's see, it's called Boxango something something. PH979. Need to adjust this one.
we're not going to use that one. Let's get an LFO tool. Go in here. I'm gonna fix some notes. Perfect. I think I'm satisfied with that. So let's see if we can create some kind of atmosphere, maybe. I want the atmospheres to be dark blue, because I like blue color. So for the atmospheres, I kind of like everything in the MISC folders, miscellaneous folders. Um, so let's see what we have in here. Let's start from here, maybe. It's going to be loud as fuck, so let's just turn down the volume a little bit. This one will be cool for this, I think. It was ar around here, I turned off my microphone for the rest of the video. So from now, it's gonna be a voiceover. But anyways, these bell tones are really nice for atmospheric sounds. They're harmonically rich and they're perfect for like drenching and reverb and have them play in the background. So I'm just gonna do a simple wavetable um, interpolation sweep using a LFO. And we're going to keep it simple with the notes here. So since we're in G sharp, we'll be playing the root notes for now. And alternating between octaves. sounds 
super low, not so good. Most of the way tables sound the best when they play that G0, like not G0, but the uh, octave zero. Sometimes they can work an octave up above that as well, so if you play like somewhere around C0 and C1. So I'm gonna try and play different notes here, but it's not gonna sound too good. See if we can make this a little bit more interesting, the patch. Give it some attack and some release, tweaking the ADSR settings. Simple yet powerful way to create atmospheres and pads. Also have a low pass opening and closing. Can also give give the sound some movements. Slight pitch modulation will will also be nice for this. And having it move in dotted timing is also really really nice. gonna try some gating for this pad and there's a neat little trick here as well because notice that I mapped it to the level here but I wanted to gate with the reverb tail as well because when you gate the oscillator the oscillator will be how do I put it the, the if you gate it before the actual reverb, you don't hear the effect that much. So what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm clicking on mix in order to go to the level knob within the reverb. And I'm going to gate the reverb instead, since that's the last effect in the chain. And then I will place a delay after the reverb in this case. And now I'm just playing around with effects.
tweaking the filter, filter settings for a little bit. some volume another atmospheric sound to play along with the first one we just created. So let's give us some more time to work with. So what we're going to do now is we're going to remove some notes. in order to give space for the other sound. I was probably saying something here, but since I didn't have my microphone on, we uh, can't hear anything. As you can hear, the sound gets cut off quite quickly here, and we're going to investigate why. Because I want the sound to play, to extend up until the next note starts. So to fix that, we need to go back to the ADSR settings and take a look at it. create a new sound for this. sounds pretty cool, harmonically rich, just what we're after. So I'm just going to 
just gonna create some weird shape here to get some movement with the weight table. filter here. it in reverb it's the only way to do an atmosphere inside trance take any sound and just drench it in reverb and it's done with a high resonance gonna give this like nice twangy back to it as you can hear in solo modulation here as well, kind of nice. Trying out different work modes. So I think I'm ready to record the actual input. I'm just going to check that I'm hitting the right note, which is G sharp. Now I'm key mapping the tilde key to start the record.
wasn't that happy with the recording, so we're gonna do another take. second atmosphere to go quite high on the macro one as you can see there so let's just quantize the notes Just the ADSR so it moves in and out of the track a little bit softer than before sound here that will help us transition into the next section That one sound, sounds quite nice. But we need to move it at the end of the phrase. So let's create a little break here. Give some anticipation before the next section. Make it easier to anticipate that our next session is coming. Not session, section. It's just going to be a two bar long sweep here. No more, no less.
add some delay to that. Maybe some tune to that. What I'm doing now with LFO is I'm going to use the second LFO to turn down the volume at the end of the sweep. Notice how it snaps back, so we need to set it to envelope mode. That sounds a bit smoother. to do next and we're going to do another type of sweep sound that will work with the first one or that's the idea that I have That one sounds kind of nice, so we're going to go for that one. So I'm just fine-tuning and auditioning it in solo, trying out different wavetables and see if I find something that sounds better, but I'm going to settle for this one. Thank you. 
I wanted to go the opposite way, so it's going to start from high, go to low. some kind of cool valley type of sound. So I have this idea where I want to just automate the weight table position.
it's all about finding the right settings. modulation to the macro as well. filters. sampling because it's a good technique to introduce some highs into a sound that doesn't really have it. And it's quite of a cool distortion on this type of sound too.
um, adding some leads to this as well. I think it's time for that. Just some final tweaking before moving on to the next sound. See if we can improve it a bit further. CVFM, which is Color Vision FM, but single cycle waveforms. assign the leads bright green which I notice now also the percussions are but yeah then I'm gonna grab Randonka by Adrenochrome's sequencer which I really really like
give it some relief. And then I figured out that modeling the release time can be pretty cool, so we're going to record an automation of this in a moment. And I stopped it too early. <laughs> so I'm gonna do a re I'm gonna record it again. I kind of liked messing around with the octave, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to automate. Well, not automate, but I'm going to assign another flow to it. And then I'm going to make it square shape. So it goes down an octave after, I think it's each bar or half a bar or something. I have to do with the opposite shape. To this, I want to create another FM lead to it, but it's going to be a more controlled one in the sense that it's just going to be a couple of notes. Play some kind of a tiny, small, little easy riff. So now I'm trying, trying to find another sound that goes well with this one. So this one was made with a filter FM. Using BCV rack if I'm not mistaken.
This one sounds real nice. I said first I wanted to do a, like a sequence, use a sequence support, but then I decided to make those like small manual riffs by manually writing in the MIDI pattern. lots of time in between them where I can fill up the space with other sounds. Gonna go for another FM lead from the pack. Time for another sound as well. Trying to find the correct rhythm and note length. for the horse shaft then.
Now I'm just drawing random length on the notes. Basically throwing shit at the wall and see what sticks. with the rest of the track so soon you'll see me scrap the whole idea and start on another sound instead sometimes if it doesn't work it doesn't work just gotta give up and move on to something else. So I'm gonna try and use the first FM thing we did there with the sequencer. And just like turn on and off the channel with the automation. This sounds much better together. I'm trying to make a variation on every second uh, part of the of channel 17, the pink one.
make another type of riser suite instead of the Porsche FM lead. Follow the wave tables sound better when they're played at low octaves. That's why I keep going to the zero octave zero, if that makes sense. So I'm keeping it very simple and stupid. One macro to rule them all. So here are some of the prism uh, wave tables, which are pretty interesting. Quite loud though. But these were made using Harmer.
really. Um, Parma is an excellent synth for creating clean wave tables like this. So the idea here is to create some kind of moving sequence that comes in and out in volume. So I don't think too much about the pattern of the first LFO. So I wanted to play like in the background behind everything else. Just have something moving all the time. So I'm going to do that for the next section. So I'm copying over uh, this instance to a new 16 bar sequence. And I'm going to make some kind of transition part here where we increase the intensity of the track. Um, and I'm going to use a filter sweep for this using the um, DGM filter from Xfer or Transfer Records, the guys that made um, Serum, which is a pretty nice filter. Um, kind of like it. Just a simple low pass and high pass filter. Um, so when you turn it to the right, you get a high pass, turn it to the left, you get a low pass. Then you have a resonance and a drive knob. The thing is you have to like find the exact values if you want to modulate it. So yeah, I'm gonna be fiddling around with this for a little bit to make it sit correctly. So as you can tell, you have to like put it exactly at 0 0.55.
So now I'm just checking the level of this guy because I felt that it got lost in the mix for a bit. But I guess that's something you'll fix later on during the mix down. So now we're going to go back in the arrangement a little bit and uh, have a look at that sequence we were creating before. I'm also going to create some variations on the leads and stuff. Make it more of a cohesive section, if that makes sense. More energetic.
almost there regarding the sequence. have to like fix the grid because they're overlapping. So now I'm happy with the FMs. Now we're gonna move on to the other sound that we started off long ago now. <laughs> Sometimes I just get lost in new stuff all the time. Trying to go with the flow.
gonna try a gate pattern for the second half of the sequence or whatever you want to call it. But I have to do it like the opposite way. But that's how I want it to sound, the second half. I have to like switch the peak so they go up to turn the volume down. I'm sure there are smarter ways to do this, but that's how I thought about it. At the moment. And then I always press the wrong key, I press shift instead of alt. <laughs> There we go. I 
kind of liked. You're gonna see in a bit that I'm gonna modulate the Y axis because you get like this rising effect. As you can hear, so. A, mac a macro to this. Wangy effect to it. riser effect. Using a weight table called up and away.
give a reverb to the leads, a return channel. I really like Valhalla plays for this. So we can have a listen and see how it sounds. giving everything some color so it's easier to see what is what. Light green should be leads, effect should be white. Atmospheres, dark blue and so on. Game staging. I'm gonna do some baseline groove.
behind everything else. We're just going to copy over the section to another 16 bar instance. I want to build some intensity before moving into the next section over here. So we're probably going to do a um, some kind of kick roll thing. So I can't really remember what I was talking about at this point of the video, but... I know for sure that I did a kick roll here. Yeah, exactly. Easy trick to build up some intensity before introducing another sound. So I'm going to use a DJM filter on the percussion group this time. Just tweaking the resonance. Making a more logarithmic, um, what you call it? Automation, uh, automation. So we're going back to the new sound we're creating using one of the squelchies. Squelchie number two. Try some Waytable automation. You'll notice I'm going to try out different depth modulation in combination with like draw curves and stuff, but we're going to end up using just a curve modulation for this. Yeah. 
not thinking too much on how to draw it. I'm just trying stuff out at the moment. Kind of fun to watch this, in because in hindsight, like I know that this is not gonna work. So yeah. <laughs> Yet I'm insisting on trying it in the video, which is kind of fun. It's kind of a weird experience to watch. But this is actually like 90% of everything I do is just trial and error. That's how you learn in the end. What will work and what will not work. So it's not actually a lie when people say it's trial and error, and that's uh, that's there's some truth to that. Now I found something that actually works. Sure, it doesn't sound good in the mix, but once you clean everything up and you level everything out and such, and you give it some space, put it in the space where it should belong, then it's kind of a nice thing. That's what I like about my wavetable is that most of the time you just need to draw a wavetable sweep automation. Um, and like you already have like 80% of the sound is already done. You don't need to think too much about post-processing, maybe adding some reverb and delay, maybe mangle the effect a little bit. So here I'm making the same idea which we did in a previous sound where I will gate um, the other half of the the of the sound, if that makes sense. Like, so so the second half of the sweep will be gated, and the other half will not be gated. If that makes sense. And I remember I was struggling a lot uh, with this one as well on drawing the lines. And I actually ended up scrapping the idea of drawing it manually within the actual LFO uh, graph. And uh, I took a auto pan and used that for gating instead. It's going to take a while until I figure that, until I figure it out. Which in hindsight I could have done the same before. It would save me time, but sometimes I want to do everything in the synth and save it as a patch so I can reuse later. Maybe put it out for sale or something. I don't know. Sometimes it can be good to have everything in house if that makes sense. No need for external processors, but. As you can see, it's such a fiddly thing to work with, especially since you can't um, use the LFO graph as, an, as a pop-out window, such as you can do in like Faceplant, for example. So that's where I decided, okay, fuck this shit, I think, yeah. Fuck this, let's grab an outer pan and do what we want instead. And 
just set, set the phase and you get a gate effect. Simple yet effective. Then you just automate the amount at 100% on where you want to have the gating. So you mark the area, cover with the mouse. And that will go around 50%. Kind of frustrating watching this. There we go. Good job. Which you can see since it's a green col green color channel. So you would like expect me to use a lot of auto grid stuff, but um, I decided not to use it this time. Tried some different stuff. Go for more a manual approach. Just correcting the levels. Some antidote FM, maybe color vision. Those weird tables are actually from the virus TI. I really like the FM algorithm in there, the positive triangle. Trying to find a 
nice timbre for this FM that goes along with the others. the sweet spot of them. It's a really nice way table actually. I really like this one. so it doesn't hit. There's like a probability of a note being played. And now I've figured out that there's like this buzzing artifact within the actual wavetable that I'm trying to fix. And usually those artifacts are on the edges of the frame. That's why I changed it to sync because it applies like a small fade out. So, but I didn't realize that it's somewhere else within the actual wavetable. Um, so I'm trying to fix it with crossfading the edges here. But it's still present, which means that it's somewhere within within the actual captured waveframe.
think it's going to be some kind of format sound, if I'm not mistaken. But first we're going to play a phaser. Um, kind of a meta thing to do, really. Like this phaser has been used in so many tracks by so many people, but it sounds really, really good. It has a very nice char characteristic sound to it. So now I'm trying to find where to change the actual rate of it. So if you look in the left, you can see where it says quarters, time units, times the knob directly to your right. If you look to the left. So that's the actual feedback. So here you can set the time limit. So that's a quarter note time 16 if I'm not mistaken. That's a quarter note times 24. So, so that's how you set the rate of the phaser. Notice how it just pops out when you add some stereo spread to it. At different time divisions.
Now I'm just gonna make it fit somewhere. Trying to find a nice rate on the LFO. Adjusting the length of each sound. Decided that I want some space in between the sounds. It doesn't become too crowded, if that makes sense.
Since the hyperdimension made the sound quite lower in volume, so trying out different stuff to give it some more presence. I can hear some nasty distortion, which I don't like here. Which I'm trying to adjust. Trying out different rates. So I have this idea where I want the LFO rate to be different in between every second um, time the foreman thing is playing. So that's what you can see me adjusting, trying to find the right value for it. So somewhere around like 0 0.2 hertz to 0 0.5 is a good value here for this particular sound. I 
gonna remove the compressor here, I think. Try out the dis different distortion. Just making sure the clipping happens before the reverb. Sounds a bunch of nonsense. <laughs>
This table is quite weird. That's actually a square wave. I kind of like that one. I think it's gonna work good with the uh, with channel 25, right? that the sounds aren't overlapping too much. So here I'm looking to make a new sound. We'll go together with channel 24.
seen some manual recording of the macro movement. It's a nice, less robotic touch to it. track see if we have something nice going on which i think we do but i mean it's just a matter of having like you know punching out ideas and see what sticks the main purpose of this video was to give you guys some insight in how you can use the wavetables and everything so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna addition audition rest of the the rest of the wig tables inside the pack um, to give you some further ideas on what to expect when you purchase the pack. So don't forget to check the link in the description. Um, 
And if you really like the video, uh, don't hesitate to hit like and subscribe. Um, so we'll just get started in a minute. Just going to prepare to get rid of some unnecessary frequencies that we don't really need. And we're going to have the just a kick and bass playing in the background together with the weight tables. So sit back and enjoy.
those were all the wavetables. Um, thank you very much for tuning in, guys, and I will see you in the next video.